Hi there, welcome to another video from Ghost Rider Music and Sounds. My name is David and my channel is all about how to write music for film, TV and games, sound design and sound recording. And my goal is to help you write better music for media. And in this video I will be talking about panning, a very simple and basic concept but really important to get a good result with your orchestral MIDI mockups. In the first two videos I talked about dynamics and about balancing. Dynamics, I talked about modulation, expression, vibrato and how you could use them to get a good sounding orchestral MIDI mockup. Balancing last week, uh, a very tough and difficult concept to master and how you can get the the right levels between the orchestral families and within the orchestral families. If you haven't seen these videos, you should definitely check them out. Certainly when you are a starting media composer and your ambition is to write orchestral music for film, TV and games. But in this video, I will be talking about panning. So what is panning? Well, simply explained, panning is nothing more than to position an instrument in a room to the right, to the middle, or to the left. Nothing more than that. For example, when you are in a room with a person and a flute, the person with the flute, which plays some beautiful melody lines, is in front of you. You will hear the flute in the center because the person is standing in front of you. But when the person walks to the left side of the room, you will hear the sound from the flute more dominantly coming from the left side of the room. Even so, if the person walks to the right side of the room and keeps playing those lovely melody lines, you will hear them coming more dominantly from the right side of the room. So that is panning. When you're using one instrument, panning is not that much of a deal. You can keep it in the center, you can keep it to the left, or you can keep it to the right, whatever you want. But imagine if you put a total orchestra in one room. And let's keep it simple for this explanation. Let's say three persons are playing at the same time. A flute, a trumpet, and one violin. They are all playing together some beautiful lines, but they are all sitting in front of you because you haven't applied any panning. So they are in the middle, in the middle of the room, and they are fighting for the first spot in front of you. And believe me, the trumpet will win because the trumpet has the biggest projection power and he will push the strings to the background and he will push the flute to the background. And then the strings will sound louder than the flute. So the violin will push the flute even more to the background. And I guess the flute, you won't hear the flute if they are all positions in the center of the room. So then it is wise to apply some panning. For example, you can push the trumpets to the right side of the room, you can push the violins to the left side of the room, and you keep the flute in the center of the room, giving them their own unique position, so you can hear them within your composition, within your mix. So that is simply explained panning and why you want to use this concept within your orchestral MIDI mockups. I promised you some tips about panning. So let's talk about tip number one. When you purchase an orchestral library these days, they are already pre-panned, meaning within the recordings, the specific instruments from the orchestra are already pre-positioned in the room where they did recordings. So for example, I use the symphonic strings from Spitfire Audio a lot. And when I play the violin, the violin is already positioned to the left side of the room. The cello is positioned to the right side of the room and the violas are positioned in the middle, a little bit to the right side of the room. And 
that is really important to know to get the most out of your orchestral library. So make sure when you are buying an orchestral library that you find the right information about how they, how they positioned the orchestral families, the different sections within the room, and that it will suit your musical ideas, your ideas about orchestration, about getting the sound, the, the, the musical ideas that you want to achieve. Tip number two, when you know how the orchestral library that you have purchased is pre-penned, you can add a little bit more panning to it and that will give you a more realistic, a more open mix. So for example, when I use the Spitfire symphonic strings, I know that they have pre pen the violin to the left side and I will help it a little bit more. So I pen it a little bit more to the left side and I pen the cellos a little bit more to the right side and the violins, I pen them a little bit more to the right side. And that will give me a much better and a much more open result in sound than when I don't pen the instruments a little bit more. So know the pre-penning and add a little bit more. Tip number three. You can apply the panning at different ways in your digital audio working station. And when I started out, I panned my instruments at the mix panel of my DAW within Logic. And that's okay, that's, that's not wrong to do. But I'm used to work with templates these days. And when you are using templates and when you are using different instruments and you start to layer them, it's much more easier to do the panning within contact, for example, or within play if you are using east-west instruments. So I pre-pen my instruments, or I pen my instruments, within contact, which will be much more efficient when you are starting to layer different libraries, different instruments with each other. You don't have to create different tracks within your DAW, uh, ending up with when you're doing a large composition with hundreds of tracks. No, you are doing the tracks, you doing the instances within contact and you are doing the panning within contact, which has a really big advantage. And I will explain it a little bit more when I will be talking about creating templates in the upcoming videos. So that is all that I want to say about panning. Three tips, when you buy an orchestral library these days, it is already pre-panned, help it a little bit more by adding a little bit more panning to that specific orchestral library and do the panning in contact or in, or in play if you are using east-west instruments. That's it for this video. So next week I will be talking about EQing and that will be the last video about the basic concepts. After that I will be talking in a couple of videos about how to create a template and what the advantages are of using templates to write orchestral music for film, TV and games. Yeah, if you appreciate this video, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already Ding that bell if you want to be notified when I upload a new video. And I will see you next week with the new video in this series, How to Write Music for Film, TV and Games.